Um, okay, welcome to our IGCSE environmental management class. So today we'll be looking at um, the chapter one aspect of environmental management class uh, syllabus that have to do with rocks, minerals, and their individual exploration. So we'll look at um, the different types of rocks, we'll look at how uh, different minerals can be exploited, how to search, how do, they, how do exploring of minerals take place, how do scientists, uh, the various ways they use to search and determine if mineral is found inside rocks. So quickly, without wasting so much time, we can start by looking at the types of rocks. Now there are three types of rocks which I call the MIS. M -I -S. Now M stands for metamorphic rocks, while um, I is igneous, and S is sedimentary rocks. Now metamorphic rocks uh, has to do with rocks or uh, igneous rocks or sedimentary rocks that have been changed by heat and pressure. So when you expose uh, either metamorphic or sedimentary rock to high heat and pressure, they are crystal content or crystal components that makes up uh, the crystal lattice of those particular rocks we change structure forming a different types of rock called metamorphic rocks now we also have igneous rocks example of metamorphic rocks are the marbles and slate igneous rocks they are rocks formed by cooling of molten magma um, from that erupts from the earth crust. Uh, example are granite and basalt then sedimentary rocks, rocks form from sediment or small particles of rocks um, that have been eroded and weathered. Uh, once they get deposited, they are usually deposited in layers and rocks contain fossils. An example of this type of rocks are your limestone, sandstones and shale. So quickly let's look at how these individual rocks are formed in detail. Now igneous rocks, they are formed by lavas through volcanic activities and magma is released once magma is released from the mantle now if you need to know how magma the process through which magma is released from the mantle you can watch my um, geography video on um, plate tectonics where i explain plate boundaries and how the constructive and destructive plate boundaries lead to volcanic eruption so it's available you can uh, make reference to it so they are formed by lava through volcanic activity now magma is released from the mantle and once this magma is released the magma rises to the surface the magma cools down to form igneous rocks which example is a granite so um, in this diagram here you can see a sample of how magma flows now this is more like uh, uh, happens it more in a con this this particular one is a constructive plate boundary because it's not violent now, uh, once this magma erupts to the surface, it's now called a lava. So this, what you're looking at now, what you see now, is a lava, and it solidifies to now form an igneous rock. Now, um, this diagram here explains the whole um, structure of how most igneous rocks are. There are two major types of igneous rocks. We have the extrusive igneous rocks, and it occurs when the magma comes out as lava and cools on the surface of the earth. So this is the magma chamber and this is the main vent through which magma erupts to the surface. Now once the magma erupts to the surface, get to the surface and solidify on the surface forming an extrusive igneous rock. While in the case of intrusive igneous rocks, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a process where uh, usually you have a secondary vent but the magma erupts and did not get to the surface. So the magma cools off beneath the earth's surface. That forms uh, intrusive igneous rocks. Uh, so now sedimentary rocks uh, these are made up of sediments now how are these sediments formed in the first place because where I found out that most students have issues is when you say it's made up from sediments they begin to think what is this sediment all about now you see sediment are small particles which are broken from different rocks so it can be broken from sedimentary rock itself it can be broken from igneous it can be broken from metamorphic rocks now they are broken down as a result of weathering now once it's broken down it is now transported by uh, erosional means and it gets accumulated in the seabed and 
sedimentation and compaction will now take place to form a sedimentary rock. Now, after breaking, they reach the seabed. Example are sandstones and flint. Now, if you look at this uh, diagram here, you see it's broken off, deposit on the seabed, then compacting and cementing. When accumulated sediment is one will lie on top of the other to form layers. Now, here uh, on the land, erosion takes um, weathering takes place. Now, eroded sediments end up in the water and begin to settle down. So, once it ends up in the water, it settles, settles down to the seabed, and that settlement process is known as sedimentation. Now, with time, more layers pile up. So after the first layer of sediment, another layer of sediment piles up. Now and presses down the lower layer. Now the process whereby the layers on top add more pressure on the ones below, leading to compaction of this sediment. Now more layers called stratas and further compaction forces out water of the layer. So this will now force out water because of the further compaction and cementation we force water out of the sediment leading to what the formation of sedimentary rock now salt crystals possibly in the case of seas and oceans salt crystals glue the layers together that is cementation so rock mass that is formed in this part time is known as a sedimentary rock then uh, in metamorphic rocks now um you see these these rocks are formed in the earth crust which also change their shape now, the change in shape is due to what? Heat and pressure. So, when these rocks are exposed to high heat and pressure, heat is provided by the magma flow and pressure is provided at the plate boundaries. Now, if you have this, you see heat from the mantle, uh, magma chamber, help to add more heat up the rocks that we're here before because they are change rocks they have to change their crystal shape then pressure from sediment we now have to compress it and as a result change the form of this rock to form a sedimentary rock it's the same thing you look at here you see this is how it compresses to now form a sedimentary rocks now earlier you have heat from the mantle hitting the same rock and pressure from the one above it so as a result it now compresses to form a sedimentary rock so now we now move from there into a rock circle each of these rocks can be converted from one form to another now how do this rock get converted from one form to another through a series of processes now let's start from uh, matthew magma good you see from the magma chamber here the magma erupts to the surface when it erupts, it will now solidify. It will solidify to form. It will solidify to form what an igneous rock through solidification. Now this igneous rock can now be melted again when exposed to heat to form magma, which can now still erupt. But let's let's go this way and see um, igneous rock. Now this igneous rock can be weathered. Once it's weathered or broken down into smaller pieces to form sediment, it can be washed away to a seabed. So this sediment, it forms sediment. Metamorphic rocks also can be weathered. Metamorphic rocks can be weathered also and transported to form sediment. Igneous rock weathered and transported to form sediment. The same sedimentary rocks can be weathered also to still form sediment. Now, each of these sediments will now be transported to where the seabed now deposition of the sediment and burial cementation and compaction of this sediment will now lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks now sedimentary rocks itself when exposed to heat high heat and pressure from the mantle and um, loads on top of it this igneous rock exposed to high heat and pressure can all now lead to metamorphic rock through a process called metamorphism. Now, this metamorphic rock can be melted. Sedimentary rock too can be melted. Igneous rock can be melted all back to magma, which now erupts 
to form igneous rock and the cycle continues. Now, extraction of rocks and minerals from the earth. Exploring for minerals. These exploring for minerals, what does it mean? Now, you see, exploring for minerals, these are methods. These are methods used by scientists to find out the presence of minerals in a particular location. Now, method used by scientists to find out the presence of minerals in a particular location is time exploring for minerals or searching for minerals. Now, these methods include one, prospecting. Now, prospecting is a process of searching for minerals by examining the surface of rocks. So, when you examine the surface of rocks to find the mineral contents that is found inside, is known as prospecting. Now, we also have remote sensing. Remote sensing is a process in which information is gathered about the earth's surface from above. Like I used to say, every material absorbs different rays of electromagnetic radiation. So once you take a picture of them, you'll be able to tell based on the color radiated by that material which type of mineral is found. Now, photographs of the areas are taken from the air first. The images are carefully analyzed for mineral presence. So the images are analyzed for the presence of minerals. Now, aerial photographs that are photographs that are taken from space can cover more ground than a person on the Earth's surface. So it will be able to tell and give you the location of that particular minerals. Now, if you look at this diagram here, this is a typical representation of um, a remote sensing diagram. You get that has been analyzed though. Uh, you, you see here you can see all the uh, coordinates so in case if there's any valuable uh, mineral you can easily locate that particular point now you see each of these rocks radiates a different type of color so from this color you they were able to tell that this is an alteration zone this is a monzo granite this is granitic rocks granodiorite gabric rocks so the one that is in economic value will now be able to they will not be able to extract it for use that's remote sensing another method is radiation detection like i said earlier mineral deposits are weathered mineral deposit because you no know, rocks is an aggregate of minerals so rock is made up of minerals so once these mineral deposits are weathered or are broken down at the earth's surface they form what is known as mineral oxides so, this oxide, they can be detected by their unique radiation pattern. So, each of them radiates a unique color. So, what does that mean? We rec this radiation pattern can be recorded by a satellite and downloaded to a computer for analysis. So, you see, like in this case, now this particular platform, the red, here is potassium radiation. The green is thorium radiation. So, here you still have some potassium here. Then the blue is uranium radiation. So, uranium 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 so the major mineral here are thorium and potassium which are highly reactive metals okay satellite images also uh is very important is used majorly also for uh exploring for minerals so this is done when computers are used to process the data from a region of rocks to check for mineral presence. Geologists confirm the presence of the mineral by visiting the location recorded by the satellite positioning system. Geologists can further check the availability of the mineral in nearby areas. Using satellites saves time and costs less. So we also have geochemical analysis to search for minerals. Now, this geochemical analysis has to do with analyzing Analyzing the chemical properties of rocks by taking samples. Analyzing the chemical properties of rocks by taking samples. Now, the samples can be taken from stream, sediment, soil, or rocks. So when you analyze the chemical properties, you now be able to tell if minerals are present there or not. So, next, we'll now look at geophysics. It's also a method. Now, geophysics is a method to identify mineral ores present in rock using their physical properties. Now, a series of vibration, vibration called seismic waves are sent through the Earth's structure. 
several sensors are placed at different distant distances from the source of vibration on the surface. The vibrations create shock waves that travels down into the rock. Now, these shock waves are reflected back. These shock waves that travel are reflected back to the sensors which is on the surface. So, the shock waves record different patterns depending on the mineral presence in the rock layer. So, you need to uh, know that. So, um, that will be part one. Rock, we've been able to cover types of rocks and also the method of exploring for rocks so in the part two of this video so please subscribe so that you get notification when i upload the part two of this video where we will now look at mining of minerals